Alright, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to be on the stage or down stage or whatever, but I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want. Alright. Oh dang, alright. I'm kinda nervous. How many of you guys were uh were at the drift club about a month ago? Oh one of you awesome. Good couple. Okay, right on well. Uh things haven't changed much. I'm still getting those butterflies in my stomach, you know, but I'm hoping that maybe tonight will go a little bit like my first time being naked in front of my wife. Uh, I'll just stand up here and show you what I got and probably get laughed at. <laughs> is that a joke? No, it is that small. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, this summer I got to spend some time with my grandmother and uh, she's a genealogy lady. I think everybody's got it. Gene genealogy person in their family. And I found out uh, something about myself. It, it kind of gives me some insight into why I have such uh, low self-esteem. Turns out that back during World War II, my uh, great-grandfather, he was a Polish Jew, right? Thank you. Um, and uh, my great-grandmother, she was a respected member of the Nazi party, all right? Which explains why I hate myself. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be baking a, a DiGiorno pizza and just get a sudden urge to push myself into the oven. <laughs> uh, but uh, I am a man of, of low self-esteem. Um, so uh, I just want to nip this in the bud, stop it before it, it begins. Um, I, I have sometimes it shows people come up to me and, and uh, want to give me big jokes, jokes about big guys, because I'm a big guy. Don't do it, okay? It will hurt my feelings, all right? Even my own brother, one time he came up to me and he said, Mike, you look like a bear. I'm thinking, okay, you know, bear. Bear, I'm a bear, you know? And, uh, you know, bears are big. Nobody wants to piss off a bear, right? And he says, no, Mike, that's not the kind of bear I'm talking about. I'm talking about a totally retarded bear. <laughs> The kind of bear that uh, when you come around, you know, people don't, you know, grab their shotguns, they just hide their back. <laughs> but um, I'm, a, I'm a, a, a shrinking minority in today's world. Uh, I, I uh, tried throughout high school to remain a virgin. <laughs> I didn't make it all the way, but I tried really hard. Um, so, uh, I found out one thing about ninth grade that, uh, if you're going to try and stay a virgin, um, don't bother going to any dances or proms or anything because you got those guys, the jocks, the cool kids, and they're getting laid on a regular basis, so, you know, they're dancing okay, they're just, you know, just like this, and for us virgins, you know, our dances kind of slowly evolve more into this, you know? <laughs> And she's going, what the heck? And I'm saying, this is a virgin dance, baby. You don't want me to get any closer than this. It's either this or the polka. Polka. Uh, I had, a, uh, I had a, a, a prison joke that had pretty much the same motion. You know, prison shower. That's me. Get in the butt. All right, anyway. Um, but uh, the funny thing is, uh, you can try as hard as you want to, to stay a virgin till marriage, and uh, you can have it just really in your heart that that's going to happen. You know, your genitals will never share the same conviction. Ever. Okay? My penis would get just downright pissed off at me. You know, if you look up at me like this, you know, I'd be like, dude, she wants me. Just do it already. And I'd say, Jesus, I'm trying to stay a virgin until marriage. And he said, come on, man. Dude, why can't you just be a normal teenager? And I'd say, well, Mr. Penis, you know, most teenagers have STDs nowadays. We're common, man. Well, what if the condom breaks and I get her pregnant? Don't go back to me, bro. I guess that one means squirt. But uh, me and my penis, we talk about a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't know if other guys are like this, but I discuss everything with my penis. 
you know, uh, from what condoms to buy, what shaving cream to use, the politics. Uh, it turns out that my penis is actually a big Barack Obama fan. Which makes sense because they're both a couple of dicks. <laughs> Only in Southern Idaho is that <laughs> I'll leave that one out when I go to New York. <laughs> um, so my parents, they're the ones who really instilled this, uh, this value of virginity, you might say, in me. And, uh, and then right after high school, they went and screwed me by moving to Las Vegas. Um, and uh, so that's where I'm going to have to go home whenever I visit home, you know. And, uh, and sending a guy who's trying to stay a virgin to Las Vegas is like sending a recovering, you know, cocaholic to Columbia. You know, there's coke everywhere, man. You know, there's coochie everywhere in that city, you know? Like, 40 foot billboard with a vagina posted across, you know, pieces of property. You know, it says, need cash? Start our porn movie. Great. In biggest terms, the ads were stocked against me. You know? Thanks, Mom and Dad. It's like, you know, they on my back and said, swim, fat ass. <laughs> but uh, I, I, uh, I've only had sex with one woman. She's in the audience tonight. And uh, I'm kind of proud of that. And I, I had a motivation uh, for doing that. And, and, uh, and that was that I knew that if I, uh, if I didn't marry the first girl who stole my virginity, I'd have to stand before God and judge me someday. And, uh, and Jesus would say to me, Mike Robinson, why didn't you stay a virgin until marriage? And I would say, well, Jesus, my penis told me that only nerds die as virgins. And Jesus would look at my penis and say, are you calling me a nerd? <laughs> <laughs> Not in Mormon land, that was going to get a laugh. <laughs> <laughs>
So uh, uh, it's funny because uh, I'm going to warn anybody, any guys here that aren't married, I'm going to just let you know right now. Uh, when you get married, your wife will expect a certain amount of servitude from you. Women, any applause to that? Is that not true? No? Okay, you do. All right. Anyway, that one does. But uh, it's like whenever that that task, you know, no matter how incremental it is, you know, that she could not do herself, but has to have me do, you know, whether it's kill a spider, you know, or feed the boys dinner, change a diaper, turn up the television, you know, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, you know, I can be in the middle of a meal, watching my own TV show, or doing chest compressions on a heart attack. And she will make me stop to do what it is that she needs me to do, you know? And it's always worse when I'm in the bathroom because it's like, you know, she'll come in there and see me on the toilet. There's a lot of clues to what's going on there. And she'll say, honey, what are you doing? Well, here, let me show you. You know? You can give me some privacy. That one sucked. I'm taking that one off. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, uh, some other things that change during during uh, the course of, of being wedded to a wife are, uh, you know, your idea of a perfect date. Um, if you got a good boyfriend, you know, your boyfriend will take you uh, out on a picnic as the sun sets, or, or you'll go uh, you'll go skating and be drinking hot coffee, uh, you know, uh, kind of this uh, Hallmark picture kind of date, right? But when, uh, when we're married for, for any amount of time, now me and my wife's perfect, device, uh, perfect idea of the day is sneak in a cookie and make a sandwich. <laughs> that's it. And that's a good day. On a bad day, there's no sandwich. <laughs> and uh, I want you all to know, I love my wife, okay? I, uh, I love her with all my heart. Uh, but there are those times. Uh, when she looks exactly like her dad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. It's, and it scares the crap out of me. Because sometimes we'll be, you know, in the course of doing some love making, and I'll look down, and there's my father-in-law staring me in the face. But, no. Or she'll be trying something new, and she'll say, do you like that? And I can even look her in the eye. And she'll ask me, do you like that? Yes, sir. I'm going to get some ass kicks after this. We've only been parents for about two years now, uh, but, my mom, or, but my wife has already started to, to come up with these things that I call momisms. Right? You know, uh, I guess the most famous momism of all time would be from Forrest Gump, you know. Uh, I can't do Forrest Gump, but I'll try. Uh, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, you know. Um, by the lack of a thought, that must have sucked. <laughs> but, uh, um, and my mom had mom momisms, you know. She would always tell me, life is like an overflowing toilet. You never know what's going to come up next. <laughs> My wife, just two years in, my, my children don't even understand English yet. And if they keep watching Dora the Explorer, they'll understand Spanish first. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she tells them all the time, you know, don't be the first to lose your temper or you'll lose the argument, right? And so this has prompted me to come up with what I call my dadism, which is, don't be the first to lose your temper or you'll lose the argument. And if your mom's the first to lose your temp her temper, everybody's fucked. <laughs> um, I found out very, very early on that, that uh, me and my wife have different views on parenting. And uh, she, uh, you know, she's more of this kind of nurture thing, you know. She, uh, she loves to cuddle and kiss and tickle and, um, and you know, me, I'm, I'm more contained, you know? 
And uh, so we'll be at Toys R Us, and she'll be looking for, you know, soft plush toys or class parts to help develop a strong mind. And, and I'll be asking the store attendant where the leashes are. Damn, nobody here likes child abuse. Okay. Um, but, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, damn, what's my next joke? Uh, yeah, so I just remember. Um, you know, that's why I think men have to work. Now, I'm not like a sexist or anything, and I'm not going to tell you that uh, women can't work. If you want to work, work. But men have to get away from the children for at least eight hours a day. Um, it's true. Otherwise, you know, the mom will come home from work, be all tired, be kicking off her shoes, right? And, and she'll look around and say, what the hell is this? And the husband who's playing Xbox will say, oh, that's a baby in a straight jacket. <laughs> you know? And, uh, man, imagine that just over so, you know? From the people who buy you OxyClean come baby straight jacket. And more fantastic designs going to explore. Lightning McQueen, Buzz by ear. And, uh, the fourth one I forgot. <laughs> you know, call and uh, reserve your free pinky ball gag. Comes in pink and blue. Alright, so, um, uh, there are, I'm looking forward to meeting you guys. There are five things that I have learned, or that I have said since being a parent, that I think no human being on the face of planet Earth should ever have to say. And if you can, please avoid these five things. Um, especially when you're in public. Okay, the first one is, no son, we do not put candy on our pee. Number two, I don't care how much it hurts, I am not kissing your butt. <laughs> Number three, what are you doing with grandma's pee? <laughs> that one goes out to my mother. Number four, get mommy's underwear out of your mouth. I don't, I don't even do that. I know where those have been. And I do. No way. And number five is this. All right, bud, mom and dad, we're just giving each other piggyback rides. And that door swung open. I was like, my son just looked up like, huh? <laughs> All right, thank you very much. You've been very generous.